This program is powered by the virtual dot show, making your offline events virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Web at Virtual, Dr. Plamen Rusev. Hello and welcome. It is about the future today. And the future is already in Estonia. The Estonian government is the world's most advanced e-government. Wonderful Webit community from all around the world. We are going to be talking today about a very exciting and at the same time, very challenging topics around AI, how AI powers opportunities on government, at government le level, and how this makes people's life better. In order at the end of the day for all of us to build what we all perceive as the better, as the future that we all want to see. And again, back, the small Baltic nation, Baltic nation has had a digital ID for its 1.3 million citizens since 2002, online voting since 2005, and put digitized health records on the blockchain more than a decade ago. Using AI to automate, to, to automate services is a logical next step. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce my special guest today, Mr. Ott Velsberg, Government Chief Data Officer of Estonia, who is involved in the impactful digital transformation of Estonian government and who has the specific remit to introduce AI into various ministries. Ott Felsberg is the Chief Data Officer for the Estonian Government. He oversees data science and data governance in Estonia, including domains like artificial intelligence and open data. He is also a PhD researcher in the Department of Informatics at Umeå University and Uppsala University. His research concentrates on the use of information systems in the public sector, with a special focus on the use of the Internet of Things. Oh, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. It's a pleasure. It's all mine. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for joining Webit. It took us some time to organize this, but I'm definitely grateful to have you now live with uh, uh, such a large number of our community from all around the world. The Estonian government approved an ambitious national strategy aimed at implementing artificial intelligence throughout its society, both in private and public sectors. So could you please share what is the current landscape in Estonia and what were the greatest challenges and achievements last year and what is the, the country's AI strategy? We all know that we go through this pandemic. Uh, we all know that you know, waves are coming one after another. So more and more digital is going to be the solution for most of our challenges. Yes. So um, I guess one of um, the most important aspects um, has been wide adoption and um, is, is the connection still working? Yeah. Okay. So it, for some reason, showed that unstable internet connection. So I will start off, uh, go back two years ago. In uh, 2019, we started to think about how we can support the uptake of AI in the government. And back then, we only had four AI use cases in the public sector implemented. So we were kind of in, in the, taking the first steps. And one of the kind of ambitions for us was to start testing out, to see what was the fuss about AI, whether AI actually proves any societal value, and if so, uh, how we can even more further support that and how we can uh, support uptake and so on. Uh, today, we have around 80 different AI solutions implemented in the public sector. For instance, we are providing uh, unemployed people recommendations on how to improve their likelihood of finding a job. Similarly, we are using AI to understand what are the different factors that uh, make different road uh, 
roads kind of uh, more prone to accidents and so on. So we have truly integrated AI today in different public services, and it is continued to grow. Similarly, we set out to have a wide scale adoption of AI. So we're not talking about just one or two organizations that today implement AI, but rather wide scale. So today over 30 different organizations are implementing AI in the government sector. So we are talking only about the central government. And similarly, everything that we have done so far, we try to make it open source. So uh, just to improve and solidify the knowledge transfer between public sector and private sector. And that it has really worked out great so far. So the strategy has been about building the base capacity to move forward, to make the government more proactive, more efficient, make services more personalized. And this is not just a talk, it's, it's actually what we have done so far. So this has been kind of um, where we have been aiming at. Um, and at the same time, it has allowed us to really test out, understand what are the problems. So for instance, um, it's about data governance. We are now putting more investments in data governance uh, using public cloud. That's an issue for us. Uh, unfortunately, we are unable to use uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and other service provider uh, services due to the risk of uh, privacy, for instance. So it has allowed us to really learn and at the same time adapt what we are doing on the government level. You know, we have been hosting uh, the Webit platform, uh, 150 plus heads of state, and we've been challenging topics around AI and um, um, obviously privacy and sustainability, etc. So what you just said, I believe is like completely groundbreaking and would have made um, a lot of, uh, of um, other countries uh, feel like they have a lot to catch up. But um, I'm sure, and we were discussing with you before this, uh, we started the live, uh, what are the new initiatives that you are working on in order to boost AI implementation in Estonia? Which sectors are mostly transformed by AI and how do you achieve it? Like education system, healthcare, you've just mentioned, judicial system, et cetera. Yeah, so one of the biggest initiatives that we are right now investing in is the initiative called Cracked AI. And Cracked AI for us is a vision of how public services should be provided in the age of AI. So more specifically, we are talking about virtual citizen assistant. So providing citizens the possibility to use any government service. So whether we are talking about renewing passport, registering your child to kindergarten, um, receiving allowances if you're a student and studying well, um, if you get into an accident, solving that problem at that very point in any means you seem kind of most uh, comfortable. And also giving the possibility to use all government services to contact the government in a way you deem necessary. So it's whether voice-based, uh, just typing SMS, uh, using WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, or any channel a person um, uh, kind of deems uh, suitable, giving that opportunity to them. So that is one of the biggest initiatives. And we kicked off uh, Crite AI initiative last year in February. We have already carried out numerous uh, POC projects. So we have tested out whether our hypothesis actually holds any value. So back then it was just an idea. And today we are already preparing to go uh, to full-scale uh, development. So I hope that the, that the team starts all the work already in uh, July. So it has been a tremendously interesting journey for us so far. Um, at the same time, providing services proactively. So the current way um, governments typically approach is that a citizen must approach the government. So if you have a child, then you need to um, notify that I would like to register uh, the child to kindergarten waiting list, and then you need to wait three years. Why do we do that? Similarly, if you're studying well at the university, you're from low-income family, why do you need to approach the government to receive 
funding or allowances. Instead, if we already had the data, then we should proactively approach the person and say, according to us, you're eligible to uh, government funding for your um, great grades, uh, study results. And we can actually assume that the person would want that. Similarly, we would assume that you would like to put your uh, child to kindergarten waiting list as well and provide actually the place that um, is closest to your home. So making the government more easier. Um, Lauren, you mentioned before different areas. In Estonia, I don't concentrate on just one area. So for instance, healthcare or transportation, but instead supporting the uptake across different sectors. So this is, this is one, of, one of the kind of uh, key aspects. Of course, we have prominent uh, areas that uh, we can see a lot of value. So um, we discussed before as well, in Estonia, we have the biobank. Um, we have the health registers. Of course, we are thinking on that area related to personal medicine, using our tremendously huge biobank compared to our population. Yeah, you've mentioned you have over 200,000 people uh, exactly. volunteering. Exactly. And uh, we have 1.3 million people uh, in Estonia total. So, uh, of course, we can tap into that resource we have, but I would rather say AI for us provides value regardless of the sector that we are talking about. Absolutely. And that sounds uh, like, uh, you know, the, really the future in uh, Estonia is going to be um, something that we in the rest of the world cannot even imagine because working with all this data in the way you have it with all the consents you have collected that's truly phenomenal and um, i can only admire such development with your permission i would like to give a stop here just for a brief ad and we will be back with more questions in regards of what is the strategy, how do you improve the data quality and awareness in the country, but that just after the break. The Virtue Show, the only one-stop shop event virtualization platform, bringing together hundreds of thousands of people by virtualizing human interactions. Fully customizable lobbies, conference halls, exhibitions, networking lounges with one-to-one, one-to-many meetings, group workshops, resources, help desks, and so much more, such as unparalleled content production like no other in the world. The Virtue Show. Transform your virtual experience today. This program is powered by the virtual.show, making your offline events virtual. Back in the studio with uh, all talking about how and where AI is going to empower the future of governance in Estonia. And um, it's so exciting to know and to understand better how this um, whole organism is functioning. It's really an exciting dialogue with a lot of questions coming up. Hashtag Webit and um, direct your questions to, uh, to, uh, of course, I don't promise we're going to answer all of them, but still, uh, we will try within the time frame we have. Um, also, send, in, send in your own words. Data governance, data quality is something that no one has really paid too much attention to. What is your strategy in order to improve data quality and the awareness of its importance? Is there any danger of AI error biases and error cases? As we've seen in many movies, sci-fi movies, though. Absolutely. So I think uh, kind of raising awareness comes from using data. So I'm, I talk about the different uh, 80 different AI projects that we have implemented that inevitably raises awareness that data quality is an issue. It mo needs more attention. Similarly, uh, search and findability of data. What do you need to do to improve that? That's kind of uh, metadata providing description about the resources that you have. So in many ways, AI helps to provide kind of attention to the more important uh, topics that have so far been kind of neglected. Similarly, 
when it came to COVID, we saw that there is a huge uh, spike in the number of uh, uh, kind of um, people looking for data related to COVID statistics. So COVID had an effect on open data. AI has an effect similarly to data governance and management. So in Estonia, I have so far seen that uh, to improve data governance, we have turned to Statistics Estonia. So we are trying to make Statistics Estonia and rebrand it as a data governance agency. So Statistics Estonia provides support related to data quality, uh, metadata, uh, lifecycle management, so on, to various different government agencies. So they are the competence center. Uh, typically, this is not only kind of uh, dependent on Estonia, but in other uh, European uh, countries, similarly across the globe, actually, uh, national statistics institutes, they have the most kind of uh, experience with data. So it is a natural next step for many countries uh, to go to. Uh, similar approach has been taken by Netherlands, and New Zealand, Canada, and so forward. And um, we have truly tried to uh, build that capacity over there related to providing support. So this is the governance side. Um, in Estonia, when we started two years ago, I saw that there was only a little competence related to uh, data science and the machine learning projects. So if I'm talking about the AI, I'm mostly talking about machine learning projects. We saw only a little competence. So from my team, we started to support, uh, even in the ideation phase, what is actually possible, understand the business value before we turned into, uh, towards uh, data science, helping with procurement, tender, uh, creating new mechanism to allow more iterative uh, uh, project development, uh, funding, so on. So we have tried to provide help throughout the whole life cycle in all different uh, steps. And I guess this with together support that we have on data governance side has allowed to for us to so swiftly uh, scale up the use cases that we have. And we were discussing a lot about um, um, how you use so much of data. Um, and what do you think this will be the implications when it comes to cybersecurity? Is it really strong enough to maintain all these so important data for every single member of the society? This includes the bio data, uh, DNA, et cetera, sequencing, of course. And how, how do you think you will be in a position to maintain the new needs of the society and the public sector in regards to cybersecurity? What particular actions are you taking in order to support cybersecurity in Estonian government and the country in general? Yeah, so cybersecurity, uh, data integrity, that's part of our cybersecurity view as well. This, is, this has been ingrained in the way we operate, I guess, as long as we know. So you talk about uh, personal identification. Cybersecurity has been kind of our, one of the most important aspects that we consider. Um, I guess many listeners haven't heard perhaps, but uh, in 2007, um, there was a cybersecurity attack, the first known international cross-border cybersecurity attack. And it was directed at uh, Estonia by one of its uh, neighbors. So this has alarmed us to concentrate on cybersecurity on a national level. Today in Estonia, we have NATO Cybersecurity Center, for instance. So this is a kind of a clear state, uh, statement that uh, this is an important topic. And uh, in every uh, information system or service development, you need to consider various uh, requirements related to the sensitivity of the data and so on. So we have... Um, an ISCA standard right now implemented. So depending on sensitivity, depending on how important the information system is, you need to have more safeguards. So this has been one of the approach. And of course, we try to raise awareness, not only in, amongst the government, but also amongst the citizens. 
Um, so there are similar to AI. We try to be everywhere at the same time and make our best case for that. What is, because we are always asking one and the same question at the end of these interviews, and this one will not make an exception. So what is your vision for the coming decades in general? And uh, what are your predictions on uh, Estonian and a global scale? So my own vision is that uh, by 2030, if we talk more specifically, is that citizens in Estonia have contro uh, control over the data that the government held on them. They can see how the government processes this data. They can decide over data use. Similarly, if I previously mentioned the correct AI, you can talk to your fridge if you wish to do so and use any service possible, whether it is from private sector or government and in the integrated manner. And I guess the best government in 2030 is the one you don't actually hear or see. Mm. So you would only need to kind of approach the government if there is something that you need help with. But otherwise, the government works for you in a proactive, seamless manner. And only when we re truly require your input on any um, decision, then we approach you. But otherwise, the government should be there to assist the citizen throughout its life cycle. And I'm a true believer that the best government is the one that you don't see or hear. So I guess if by 2030 we achieve that, then that's one of the biggest goals. It sounds, it sounds like in a very old topic, sorry, but that's how it sounds to me. Does it mean the end of the policy makers or how do you see it? Are it going to be algorithmic mainly? No, no, that, that, it doesn't mean that there is no government, but it, it more means that we have reduced the bureaucracy to its uh, minimum level. Okay. So even if we talk about using different government services, right now a typical approach is that uh, you have 10 different information system, regardless of uh, where, where you live. And it really makes the, even opening a business, not, on, not in Estonia, but still in most countries, opening a business or declaring a, your taxes, it takes a lot of time. In Estonia, we're really proud of saying that uh, declaring your taxes takes less than three minutes. That's true. Like uh, It took me, I guess, even less than three minutes to do so. But if we have all the information, we are kind of uh, verified that it is so, then I would really like if it takes only 15 seconds. Hmm. Because even two minutes a year times 60, it's already two hours wasted of my life or even uh, three, three hours. So every step counts. So um, what I think an the government optimization. Here. What an optimization. It's like, <laughs> it's like crazy. We've already heard about the efforts which the Estonian government makes to be on the top of the digital country. But what is your reflection uh, when, you talk, when you talk about private sector? And how do you support AI to be implemented there? Yeah, so in Estonia, we have an open source policy. So, and it applies to AI as well. Hmm. Um, in 2019, I came up with an idea of uh, AI core components. So the idea is that if the government makes investments in AI, um, for instance, I talked about the correct AI, everything is going to be open source. If, if any way possible. If there are cybersecurity risks or some other uh, risk that we foresee, of course, we are not going to make it public. Similarly, not only open source, but providing necessary um, Docker containers, uh, providing services that different private sector counterparts and citizens can easily tap into. So from a technical perspective, we try to ease kind of knowledge transfer and uh, reuse of what the government has already invested in. So this is definitely one of the core areas. And we are right now implementing the same model that has so well worked out in the public sector to the private sector. So we are going back to the core. And I will state that 
you should not start investing in AI thinking how you can apply AI. You should start investing in AI by rethinking your business and understanding what are your core problems today. And the same way I have approached our AI applications, we start always by identifying the core problems that need to be solved. Sometimes it is a simple um, IT development, but we already receive a lot of benefits. So I think this, uh, there is an overthinking and in definite in research and so on that we need to take a specific technology and fit that into the business case. It shouldn't be like that. You take that business organization, business case, and see how the technology can support in the end those problems. Oh, that's, that's very comforting when, I, when we know that uh, um, this is the way that a government thinks, but because you are representing the government. But what is the reaction of the people uh, in Estonia in regards to using AI? Is the government transparent enough when collecting data? And are people trusting the government enough? Absolutely. So uh, we had a survey among um, 1,000 Estonians asking their opinion on uh, um, what did they think about AI? What are the risks? And we actually don't see a lot of uh, kind of this sentiment from uh, citizens. So people are kind of more positively um, uh, kind of um, situated right now. Uh, all in all, we saw one third of Estonians that foresaw risk that AI can take their jobs. Um, otherwise, people were more uh, tilted towards uh, that AI allows them to do more uh, stuff, uh, kind of more beneficial and more value adding uh, tasks. And I think a clear statement is um, one year ago, um, I had a project with our national library. And on that specific uh, project, we try to understand how we can automate uh, keywording and uh, library search and so on. And the people involved at that uh, project were the people who provided keywords, helped uh, to index the books and so on. So they were actually helping to uh, kind of automate completely the work they were doing. So this is a mindset that I think that should be more kind of valued that be afraid to change the way you you actually work you operate and if there's a possibility to automate what you're doing right now then it's kind of inevitable that at one point it is going to be automated um yeah so that's that's a really long short answer oh it's so exciting to listen to you and um to see how a country is um, heading into, into the future by implementing AI at the same time by making its best, and hopefully it will be the best, to protect the citizens and to empower the citizens for um, making them their lives better and giving them the full freedom of choice of who, where, and when can use their private data. At the end of the day, None of us, and uh, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of the global Webit community because we, when we were able, we, we used to meet quite often, and now we talk a lot. We do not want to see ourselves and our children prisoners of their own uh, data, and that's where European Commission is doing a lot of efforts. Obviously, uh, responsible businesses are also trying to to kind of you know, leverage the, the great opportunity of you know, harvesting all this data, but at the same time, keeping the right uh, and the freedom of choice um, within the, the owner, the real owner, the citizen, the person. So definitely true pleasure having you with us. I very much look forward to welcome you, hopefully, whether it will be in person or virtually at our upcoming um, Global Impact Week, um, 14th, 18th of December. It will be a full week dedicated on empowering and uh, bringing Goal 2030 closer and faster. So thank you so much, Ot. Dr. Ot Velsberg, 
Chief Data Officer for the Estonian government. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vlamen. And waiting for the invitation. Oh, that will be there coming to you. You don't need artificial intelligence to have it. You can predict it right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, a great and very, very interesting discussion. Uh, coming up next, next Tuesday, we shall be hosting Dragos Tudorace, Tudorake, a member of the European Parliament and chair of AIDA, the Artificial Intelligence in the Digital Age. Absolutely fascinating and challenging discussion. That's what I'm expecting from him also next week. Until then, stay safe. And you can already go to webby.org slash 2021 and register for our upcoming Webit Global Impact Week on 14th, 18th of December. Until then, there will be uh, more editions, um, one for South America, other for other parts of the world. So stay tuned with us and talk again soon. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. This program is powered by the virtual.show, making your offline events virtual.